Browns GM Andrew Berry holding his pre-draft press conference today here in Berea. He admitted to us before he started that he wasn't going to give us much information no matter what we asked him, and he certainly did live up to that promise. But before we get to our takeaways from the press conference, we do need to address uh, the situation with Perry on Winfrey, who of course was arrested last week for assault in Harris County, Texas. Andrew had his first opportunity, Mary Kay, to address the situation and the allegations against Perry on. Yeah, you know, what I thought was interesting about what Andrew Berry said was the fact that he is not ruling out having to part ways with Perry on Winfrey. They're doing their own internal investigation, and if they determine that they don't like what they hear or they don't like what they see, he could be gone from this football team. We all know that he had plenty of maturity issues last year as it was, and I think he's on thin ice right now. Yeah, Ashley, this is obviously a difficult situation for the Browns to navigate, and just right now they aren't giving giving away much information. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's going to stay like that kind of until there's more clarity on the legal side of things. Of course, that was basically all that Andrew would say, that he wouldn't comment necessarily very deeply on something that was an ongoing legal situation. But like Mary Kay alluded to, I mean, Perrion had discipline issues last year just within the team. He missed that Jets game for a disciplinary reason. And um, I think they thought maybe the maturity was coming around towards the end of the season and this is another a definite roadblock for him. All right, let's get to what Andrew Berry had to say about the draft and do some takeaways. Mary Kay, what do you have? Well, speaking of defensive linemen, uh, Andrew Berry did say that he expects to add to the defensive end room and I think that's key because right now they've got Miles Garrett uh, and then behind him at number two edge they have Obo Okoronkwo. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, But they still need a third edge rusher that they can get about half a dozen sacks from. Maybe that could be Alex Smith, I mean Alex Wright, um, but you know they still probably have to go out and get another edge. So look for that to happen either in the draft or free agency. Ashley, what did you take away? Yeah, I think my takeaway has to do with the linebackers, that the Browns are very happy to be able to get Anthony Walker Jr. back, Sione Takitaki back, but I still think there's this looming question over, they had five guys suffer season-ending injuries last year, including they lost three starting middle linebackers. So I don't think it's out of the question for them to add to that room. You know, of course, Andrew Berry's not going to point us in one direction over the other. He said they're very happy with how those guys who had injuries have rehabbed, but I do think, you know, he may a comment talking about the defensive ends that the roster is going to get to 90 at some point here, right? It might not be April, might not be May, but it's going to get to 90. I wouldn't be surprised for them to add some more depth to that room with so many guys working their way back from injuries. And something unexpected, Andrew Berry talked about horses and geese today and sort of what he prefers when he looks at traits of players. Uh, to kind of lay it out, he was talking about late round draft picks, fourth rounders, fifth rounders, guys that have a low percentage of becoming starters. So what do they look like? Do they look for geese? who can fly and swim and walk, but they don't do any of it particularly well. Kind of mean to geese, but whatever. <laughs> or horses who can't do that stuff, but boy, can they run. So Mary Kay, Andrew kind of making the point that he's looking for elite traits when they get into that fourth round, fifth round, sixth round. And we've kind of seen that in his drafting so far, specifically a guy like Donovan Peoples-Jones or you know, even Demetric Felton. It hasn't always worked out, but he's looking for traits in those guys. Yeah, now if it walks like a, a goose and it quacks like a goose, go with the horse. But um, yes, they have done a nice job in those later rounds. I mean, even Michael Woods, they won't have Michael Woods, the receiver from Oklahoma, available to them this year because he ruptured his Achilles. But he was off to a great start last year. They do a really, really nice job in those later rounds of finding gems and horses. That's true. I mean, Ashley, were you expecting some animal talk today? I don't know. Are geese animals, birds? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Were you expecting some animal talk here? First of all, let's clear it up. Geese are definitely animals. Birds? Um, are birds different? <laughs> no, they're, they're animals. Fowl? Okay, I need to get through this. No, they are animals, for the record. Um, but I, I forget what I was saying. But I think what we've seen with this regime, um, kind of something that you've alluded to, I think in the past we've seen them particularly gravitate in those later rounds to former five star guys who maybe didn't necessarily pan out in college the way most people thought. DPJ is a prime example of that, but you know, they also go after those SEC guys, Richard LeCount, who obviously didn't end up panning out here, kind of fit that as well. I mean, I think when you're looking in the later rounds, those traits are worth taking a flyer on a guy for. All right, well, we'll have full coverage of everything Andrew had to say today during his pre-draft availability and, of course, everything leading up to the draft, which is next week all of a sudden, believe it or not. It'll all be at Cleveland.com slash Browns.